welcome back to my channel. This feels a bit strange because first of all I haven't done a sit down video, I don't think, for quite a long time, let alone a sit down video about my personal life. <laughs> um, if I do one it's like usually about traffic or something these days and I'll apologise at the beginning in case I get emotional because I'll come on to it but I feel like that is definitely one of my symptoms. I'd say I'm quite an emotional person anyway, you've seen me cry <laughs> in previous videos. Um, but I feel even more so now whenever I think about certain things, I watch something on telly, I cry. Um, but I'm going to try not to get emotional in this video. Um, but this is my sit down chat with you about my first trimester because I'm pregnant. You will have seen my little short video last weekend that I posted up, which is when me and Carl found out. Um, so if you haven't seen that, go and watch it um, and yeah I am pregnant and I can't believe I'm past my 12 week point already um, but I thought about filming and I did actually film a few clips through my first trimester of different bits but when I look back at the clips they were just of me basically talking some had Carl in them as well um, because not a lot really went on in my first trimester, which I'm going to come on to as well. But I thought it would just be better to sit down, catch up with you this way. I put a little um, question box on my Instagram the other day, so a few of you have asked me questions. And I'm going to answer them in this video, so thank you for those. And just cover the things that people have been asking me since we announced that I am pregnant. Um, so I'm going to try and keep this as concise as possible. I always say that, but you know me, I love to talk. So please get comfy, grab a cup of tea, whatever you want. And um, I hope you enjoy this update with me about my first trimester of my very first pregnancy. I have got my phone here because I made some notes because I didn't want to miss anything out. Um, so I'm going to start with when we found out. Um, we found out that I am pregnant the week, if you remember, the week that I was in the Cotswolds for my mum's 60th birthday. That is the week that we found out that I was pregnant. Um, and if you saw those videos, I'll link them down below if you didn't see them because now you'll be able to watch them knowing that I was pregnant. And for the because I split it into two parts, I did two videos. The first part, I didn't know I was pregnant. The first Cotswold video, I didn't know I was pregnant at that point because Carl wasn't there with us. He was joining us at the weekend. I suspected that I might be because I had, I'd missed my period and I was getting stomach cramps but different to how I would if I was coming on my period so there was a, it was a coming on my period stomach cramp feeling but they were very short they didn't last long but they were on and off throughout the whole week whereas usually when I come on my period I get stomach cramps then my period comes whereas that wasn't happening obviously <laughs> um so I suspected through the week and then the Friday that Carl got to us, uh, I went and picked him up, brought him back and you'll have seen we had, I think I showed that we had fish and chips with my family that evening and after we had that fish and chips, me and Carl went upstairs and we did a pregnancy test. And I have to admit it was my first pregnancy test I have ever done so the fact that it was positive is just crazy. The short video that you saw last weekend was me and Carl finding out um, and I was holding the pregnancy test in my hand and we were like three two one <laughs> like and looked together so we found out together which I thought was really lovely um, I didn't surprise him I wanted to experience it with him and just how it worked out is you know was really nice and actually because all my closest family were there pretty much um, we told them that evening so they knew right from the start pretty much from when we knew um, so it was quite special I have been asked which has been really lovely one of the questions I've been asked most I think is how are you how have you been feeling I hope it's not been too <laughs> bad your first trimester um, because as I know from talking to other people and their experience of the first trimester and pregnancy 
people have it pretty rough and one of my good friends Amy she had her little boy last summer I know that she was sick throughout the majority of her pregnancy and it was pretty rough but I have to say I have been very lucky I feel like um with the symptoms that I've had or lack of symptoms the only symptoms I have really had are the tiredness I have felt the tiredness it's real um I can sleep like a teenager <laughs> I don't think I've slept as much I don't even know if yeah I probably did sleep that much when I was a teenager but I used I would go to bed later and wake up later but um I can literally be ready for bed at eight o'clock and I'll wake up at eight o'clock the next day I might wake up in the in in the middle of the night I, it'll be broken sleep but I'm pretty much sleeping for like 11 12 hours a night or I can um that has gotten better now um but I'm still sleeping I'm still sleeping a lot and I know I'm in a with it being my first pregnancy that's a luxury because I don't have a toddler or anything to run around after so everyone's saying make the most of it now <laughs> so I am other symptoms that I have I've had quite early on it was after I found out but quite early on I felt like my boobs were quite sore they got bigger quite quickly um, and again that has eased a little bit but they have been quite tender um, and more recently I've been getting headaches now I don't know that's because I'm not drinking enough water for what a pregnant person should um, I have increased that recently um, so we'll see if that helps but I've been getting the odd headache nothing major but I'll wake up with a headache and then it'll be an, uh, like difficult to get rid of um, but apart from that and the slightly more emotional I think are my only symptoms. I have had no sickness whatsoever. I, in the early stages of my first trimester, I, I felt a little bit sick, maybe like three mornings. Uh, but as soon as I'd had breakfast, I was absolutely fine. So um, yeah, I haven't been sick once and very few times have I actually even felt sick. So I'm very lucky, I know. So I'm gonna a answer some specific questions that people have asked me. Obviously, I've just answered the one about how I've been feeling. So thank you so much for everybody who's asked how I've been feeling, um, but I'm doing well and my energy is coming back. That's what I felt as well with the tiredness. I just felt such a lack of productivity. I, I just felt so tired that doing the smallest of tasks just felt like uh, climbing a mountain um, but I can say that that's not I don't feel completely back to normal and I probably won't <laughs> but um, it's definitely improving so I'm getting more done now than I was a month or so ago January was definitely a struggle through like January usually I think we suffer from a lack of productivity motivation all that stuff but for me I felt like that was intensified this January <laughs> some of the questions that people have asked how far pregnant am I um, so I am I found out when I was about four or five weeks pregnant so I found out quite early I think that is to find out um, correct me if I'm wrong um, but I am currently 15 weeks pregnant um, when you're seeing this I'll be about so on Sunday I'm filming this on Friday I was 15 weeks yesterday on Thursday so as of when you're watching this I'm about 15 and a half weeks pregnant um, and I am due in August so yeah summer baby is on its way <laughs> another question I've had um, was this baby planned yes this baby was planned me and Carl obviously as you'll know if you followed me for a little while we got married last April so we are coming up to our first wedding anniversary and I haven't really spoken about it on my channel before, I don't think, but um, it is something that I've kept qu quite private um, amongst just obviously me and Carl, my close friends and family. But I have always said that I was a lot broodier when I was in my early 20s. I'm 35 now, so yes, I am classed as a geriatric mother, pregnancy, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
I am an, I guess, an older person with where pregnancy is concerned. I know it's awful. Like you're considered old when you're 35 or over with pregnancy. Um, but yes, that's me. Um, but yeah, so I always said that I felt broodier and more maternal when I was in my early 20s. And then I think as my 20s went on and obviously I wasn't meeting the person I wanted to have children with, that sort of dwindled a little bit because I just thought, well, maybe it's something that's not gonna happen for me. Um, and then obviously I've met Carl, we've got married and we have discussed it quite a lot about having children. And yes, I have never said I don't want children, never. Um, but I did go through a stage of, I think because of my age as well, I've been on the pill since I was 16. Um, so more than half my life I've been on the pill and I just didn't know how easy it was gonna be for me to get pregnant. I really thought that I might struggle. I've had, and I know that this is a very sensitive subject for so many people, so I'm sorry if anything I say in this video upsets anyone or offends anyone. Um, that's not my intention at all, obviously. I'm just telling you my experience. Because I have a couple of friends that are really struggling to get pregnant, so I know that it's a sensitive, topic and yeah I I never know what the right thing is to say or do really but um basically we decided that we did want to have a child together and we wanted our own family that's I've always wanted my own family since I was young what should we get emotional now <laughs> um And Carl will be the best dad ever. <laughs> Why? Oh, put yourself together, Charlotte. Whew. Whenever I think about Carl being a dad, it just makes me emotional. He will be the best dad. He w really will. And I'm so excited to see him with our baby. And the comments. The comments on our video last week, whether it was on Instagram or on YouTube, where people have said, you're gonna make the best parents, honestly. <laughs> they are honestly the nicest comments that you could write. Um, cause I've discussed this with my friends and I think probably everyone who falls pregnant for the first time and then thinks about being a mum, whatever stage of life you're at, everybody must feel the same. Like, am I going to be a good parent? Am I cut out for this? And I have definitely had those thoughts, but we're taking it in our stride. We're not thinking too far ahead yet <laughs> because I just, I can't do that. <laughs> so yes, this baby was planned basically. Who would have thought that question would have been so emotional? But anyway, <laughs> moving on. That was Leah that asked that question, by the way. So thank you, Leah. Um, and I'm sorry that I cried. <laughs> I did warn you at the beginning that that may happen. Um, so do you have any feelings about a gender if you are having, um, if you think it's a boy or a girl? So no, at this stage, I don't. Um, have a feeling what it is with how I feel or anything like that. I know that old wives tales, I've heard a lot of them, people say straight away, as soon as I tell people that I've had no sickness, they're like, oh, it's gonna be a boy. But then my friend who had a boy last summer had severe sickness throughout her pregnancy. So I'm taking the old wives tales with a pinch of salt, to be honest. If I had to say what I feel like it might be, um, then I would say a girl just because so i don't really have a preference for whether it's a boy or a girl and carl doesn't either he is going to be over the moon whether it's a boy or a girl however i think carl is manifesting a girl because he would love a daughter and he whenever he refers to the baby we don't know what the gender is yet we don't know we are going to find out, um, and I'll come on to that when I talk about scans, um, but 
every time Kyle refers to this baby, he refers to this baby as a girl. <laughs> um, he will say she, her, or he will use a name that we have we haven't chosen a name for a girl or a boy yet, but we have names that we like and he will refer to the baby as a girl's name. So I feel like he's manifesting a girl. So I will be surprised if it's a boy, over the moon if it's a boy, because I know that girls can be quite difficult. I know being the one of three and I have two brothers, I think I was probably the most difficult for pretty both of my parents when I was younger, especially my mum when I hit that my teenage years. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it makes me a little bit nervous to have a girl if I am, but I feel like it, there's other things with a boy as well that would make me nervous too. So I honestly, I don't have a preference, um, but I feel like Carl is definitely manifesting a girl. So we shall see if that, if he is or not. Um, but in how I feel and stuff, I have no idea. I don't know. Another thing I've had is when I put that video up last week, and obviously my 12 week scan photo is in that video, I had a couple of my friends telling me that they thought the actual scan looked like a girl. So, um, but then I've had people say that when they're around me, they get the vibe that I'm gonna have a boy. So, um, who knows? I have no idea. Let me know. What do you think? What do you imagine me having, a boy or a girl? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know your guesses because it won't be that long until we find out the gender now. I'm 15 weeks, so it's not gonna be long. Um, are you worried about how to introduce Arnie to the new baby, fellow cocker mum here? Hi. <laughs> um, so I am so excited about Arnie meeting our baby. I'm looking forward to seeing how he is with the baby. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm nervous about it because I feel like Arnie is such a loving, and I feel like Cocker Spaniels in general are such loving, affectionate dogs, which is part of the reason we got a Cocker Spaniel, that I just think he's gonna be the cutest with our baby. Um, and when he's met, so when he first met my niece, my older brother's daughter, and she, I don't know, she was only very, she's four now, but at the time I think she was maybe two. Um, and so very small, and he crawled on his belly up to her because he was very cautious because I don't, he's not really been around many children before. Um, and that was so cute and he was so gentle with her. And then now she's four, when we were out in the cots, for my mum's birthday that week. Arnie, I think I got a couple of clips. Arnie was cuddling up to me and Lexi and playing with Lexi and it was just really sweet. So I think he's gonna be really lovely with a baby. So I'm not nervous about it, but um, I'm just excited to see him with a baby. And I've oh, watched so many reels on Instagram of like dogs where they're cuddling up to the baby and it's just so cute. So I really hope he's like that. Um, and he'll still get lots of cuddles, I'm sure. There's only gonna be one baby. There's definitely only one baby in there. So there's two of us, so I'm sure Arnie will not go without cuddles. He'll make sure of it. <laughs> I know I touched on um, our scans earlier. So we did actually have an early scan because with it being my first pregnancy, I, I'm clueless to the process. <laughs> and so when I fell pregnant, I didn't realize, I assumed that you did a pregnancy test, you went to your doctor, they did tests and they confirmed that you were definitely pregnant. I was quick to find out that that's absolutely not the case. Your first scan is 12 weeks. I wasn't necessarily aware of that before. <laughs> Maybe that makes me completely stupid, but I just wasn't. Um, so I was quite surprised to find that out and we were quite keen, like I said, with it being our first and completely clueless to everything. <laughs> uh, we were keen to just make sure that everything was okay and um, so we did book an early scan. We used Window to the Womb 
and we went and booked an early scan and I had my early scan at seven weeks and I think I was two or three days. Um, I'll insert the picture actually here so you can see what baby looked like at seven weeks. Um, I did have an internal scan and they absolutely said that there's no risk to the baby um, by having that. Um, it was like, it wasn't painful at all. I'd say a smear is slightly more uncomfortable than the internal scan that I had. So if you're pregnant or if you if you get pregnant and you think of having an early scan and they tell you it's internal honestly it's nothing to worry about it didn't hurt at all um it was strange because i've carl was with me and i've never had an internal examination or anything like when i have my smears i'm on my own so it was a bit strange for because it was a man doing it as well there was a female in there too but it was actually a man that was and i've never had that before either so it was very strange having my husband sat next to me and a man doing my internal scan <laughs> so um but it was not painful and actually as soon as the baby was on the screen we were both completely fixated on that and just yeah it was fine um and we saw the heartbeat it was like flicking like 100 miles an hour and it was so surreal and they confirmed that everything was growing looked like it was growing as it should where it should and all of that good stuff and obviously the fact that the baby had a heartbeat at that stage was um reassuring um so then we had our 12 week scan um with the nhs at the end of january so 31st of january actually i had my 12 week scan and they found out then that actually i was four days further along than i'd been told previously so my due date got brought forward and um yeah i was basically like 12 weeks and five days i think when i actually had that 12 week scan instead of 12 weeks and one day um and the 12 week scan so there's a bit of a story that goes along with that because i've i've told you about carl retrading so he's obviously in the RAF. he is an aircraft engineer and he's retrading to be air traffic control he has two courses to do he did his first one before christmas um his next one was meant to be in may this year um like Shawbury, so two and a half hours away from where we live um so when we found out that i was pregnant being due in august his course it's an eight month course so it would have got interrupted so he's pushed his course back to uh november so he's not doing that course now until november he'll go away for eight months just come back at weekends so that's going to be interesting just after i've had a baby um but so basically at the moment he's holding a Bryce Norton which is about an hour and 15 minutes away from where we live so again he's away during the week and he comes back at weekends so which is fine he's holding he's doing whatever work he's doing there in the meantime um and he was told like when he went back to work after Christmas that he was going to be on ready to readiness to move for the fire strikes fire service strikes uh, he would get five days notice and he would have to go and do a five day course to then potentially cover the fire service strikes should they strike this month. Well, the Friday, so our scan was on the Tuesday. On the Friday, he was at work. He was like, I'm just about to leave. And then he phoned me and said, I've had an email and I've been called up to go and do this course. I have to be in North Wales on Sunday for next the whole of next week, which meant he was gonna be in North Wales the week that my 12 week scan was which is typical um these things like he's been at Bry's for a couple of months he's been home whenever he needs to be home and it was just it was just typical and that, i feel like that's how the military goes that's how these things go my mum being a, a military wife for 30 years when my dad was in the army my mum's told me already they're never there when you need them. Obviously, it's not Carl's fault. It's just, he was needed elsewhere. <laughs> um, but I was very upset about that, obviously. I had, I think that was probably the one time I've actually cried over something, like, that maybe I should get emotional about. <laughs> um, I had a bit of a cry, and I just felt bad for Carl as well, because I know it's difficult for dads because they don't experience a lot of it anyway and the fact that he couldn't be there for our first proper scan was sad but um we will have others so and as long as he's there at the birth then that's the main thing um 
so basically yeah he missed the 12 week scan um and because I didn't really want to go on my own, my mum was working that morning so she couldn't get the time off work. So my dad came with me and he loved it. We spent the morning together, which me and my dad don't really spend one-on-one -on -one time like that together very often. So it was really lovely to have him there. Um, I did explain to the lady in the scan room because she said, Dad, if you just sit there. And I was like, oh, I did explain. He's my dad, not the dad. <laughs> um because I don't suppose it's very common that they actually have dads going like the dad of the lady that's pregnant going with her to the scan um obviously this one was not an internal scan it was just on my belly so it's all fine my dad was in the room with me and it was just fascinating because they had to do a bit more so we were able to look at the screen for longer we were in there for like 15 minutes and it looked like a proper baby now. Again, I'll put it on the screen so you can kind of see what my seven week scan was compared to my 12 week. And if, obviously if you've had kids, you'll absolutely know. But um, it looked like a proper baby at 12 weeks. It had arms, legs, um, hands, feet. It had a brain because it didn't have a brain our seven week scan. And it was moving, which was bizarre because I felt like then that I was watching somebody else's scan because it was moving quite a lot, but I obviously couldn't feel anything. Um, so that was surreal, um, but it was really lovely. And obviously we got a couple of photos to take away with us. And then I was able to, I phoned Carl literally as soon as I came out of the hospital. Um, my dad phoned my mum because she was dying to know that everything was okay as well. She was very jealous that she wasn't there. Um, she has said if Carl can't make my 20 week scan that she's free because it's on a Friday and she's free on a Friday because she doesn't work a Friday. So she's already, you know, put a name forward for volunteer for the next one if Carl can't make it, but we're really hoping that he can for the next one. But also because Carl didn't make the 12 week scan, he obviously wants to see the baby as it is now, um, more formed and we weren't going to, we were going to wait for our 20 week scan to find out the gender and have our next scan. But now because of the circumstances with him not going to our 12 week one, we have booked an early scan to find out the gender before the 20 week one. So we are using window to the womb again and um, we are going to go and have that shortly after I get back from Dubai actually. Um, so I go to Dubai next week with Tropic and when I get back from that, we're gonna have our scan. So um, yeah, that's very exciting. I'm just so excited for him to see um to see the baby as it is now and it obviously be even more developed than I than I saw a few weeks ago so yeah very exciting and then the final question that I've had is have I struck have I had any struggles or have I struggled with anything so far and like I said my symptoms have been not that bad at all um so as far as that goes no but um I would say obviously Carl missing that I didn't struggle with it but I got upset over it um but I didn't dwell on it and actually it all worked out okay and and Carl will will be at another well he'll get two more hopefully so at least two more um I'd say my main struggles is probably what every person goes through is your body changing and just with my tiredness that I had in my first trimester, not being able to do as much or not being as productive as I usually am, not going to the gym like I would, like, you know me, I'm an early bird usually. Um, I get up, I go to the gym first thing in the morning, it sets me up for the day and then I am productive and I get on because I'm obviously self-employed. So not being able to have my routine like I am used to, was a little bit of a struggle um, coming to terms with that. And one of my friends, Amy, who's in my Tropic team, really helped me with that. Um, I've had a few calls with her and she has, she's a mum of three as well, so she knows what's going on with me. Um, she's been through it several times and she's really helped put things in perspective and it's been really nice having people to talk to about it, my friends that have been through it. Um, so I did tell Amy and I did tell uh, my best friend Monique as pretty much a day or two after I found out just so that I had people to 
confide in which has been really useful um but yeah the only other struggle and i wouldn't say it's a struggle as such but just my body changing obviously things are getting tighter things are not fitting like they did because things are expanding and um yeah so that's been a, and i think particularly because i've got something specific coming up in the form of my first big tropic trip um trying to find outfits for events on that trip have been tricky <laughs> so that's the only thing which is trivial really but i'm sure every woman has gone through it and goes through it during pregnancy about seeing your body change it's just bizarre you don't feel like yourself you don't look like yourself so but hopefully now i'm out of my first trimester i will feel more pregnant and not just like i've i'm putting on weight <laughs> um so hopefully that will get a little bit easier but who knows it probably won't but anyway it's gonna have a great result at the end of it so they are all the notes that i've actually written down on my phone um, of what I wanted to cover and I have gone on for about half an hour I think so I'm gonna leave it there but I just want to say thank you so much again for all your lovely comments your messages um I've really appreciated it and I know I've got lots of support along the way from lots of experienced ladies and I'm sure you will help me out as I navigate my way through this next chapter of my life um but thank you so much for sticking around if you've made it to the end listening to me talk for half an hour i know it's not an easy feat <laughs> um but if you've got any other questions that maybe i haven't covered then please leave them in the comments below i will be doing other pregnancy videos it's not all i'm going to be doing because obviously there's other stuff going on in my life as well as being pregnant but obviously that's going to be a very big part over the next six months um so if you have any videos that you would like to see from me whilst I am going through this journey then leave them in the comments below as well so that I can do those for you um yeah and I think that's it but the next one is definitely not going to be a pregnancy video because I'm off to Dubai with Tropic and I'm very excited um once I've actually figured out what I'm going to wear <laughs> through the whole trip um but it's going to be incredible I had the itinerary through yesterday and a few little gifts but I'm going to show you that in the next video as I pack for Dubai so stick around for that if you're not subscribed then make sure you hit the subscribe button and um, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and thank you as always for your support it means so much to me now more than ever and um yeah i'm very excited to share this journey with you all have a lovely rest of your day weekend whenever you're watching this and i will catch you in the next video bye